prove that the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3 cannot be a rational number. Let's go ahead and go through the proof. So we're going to do a really nice proof. We're going to start by letting it be called x. We're going to call it x, and we're going to try to find uh, an equation for which uh, this is a solution of. So now let's go ahead and uh, square both sides. So then x squared is equal to the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3 squared. And so there's a formula to multiply this out. Uh, basically, if you have a plus b quantity squared, you square the a, you multiply the a and the b, and you double it, and then you square the b. So here we'll square the square root of 2. It's going to give us 2 plus square root of 2 times the square root of 3 times 2. So 2 square root of 2 square root of 3. Then you square the square root of 3, so plus 3. So this gives us x squared equals um, 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 2, and then here we have uh, square root of 2 times square root of 3 is uh, square root of 6. And let's keep going here. Let's try to get rid of all the square roots so we can end up with a nice you know, equation with, with integer coefficients. So let's subtract the 5. And now we have this here. And again, so far we know uh, from what we've done that this value of x is a solution to this equation. So let's keep going. Now let's go ahead and square both sides again. Again, using this super powerful formula, which we talked about, you square the first one, it will give you x to the fourth, because it's uh, x squared squared. Multiply these two, the 5 and the x squared, then double it. That'll give you minus 10x squared. And then you square the negative 5, so that gives you 25. And this is equal to, so now you square each piece here, you square the 2, you get 4. Square the square root of 6, you get 6. So this is 24. So now we can subtract 24 from both sides, and we end up with this polynomial equation, which is beautiful, x to the fourth minus 10x squared plus 1 equals 0. And we know that our x is a solution to this. So note, here's the beautiful part of the proof, by the rational roots theorem, Uh, all of the possible rational roots are of the form uh, p over q, where p is a factor of the constant term, which is 1, and q is a factor of the leading coefficient, which is also 1. So uh, in this case, that would mean that uh, the possible rational roots are, well, the factors of 1 are, I'll do it up here on the side, plus or minus 1, and then you divide those by the factors of this one over here, so plus or minus 1, so you just get plus or minus 1, so our plus or minus 1. So if this equation is to have any rational roots, it would be uh, one of these, and none of these uh, satisfy this equation, by the way. So this is a root of this equation, so note x equals the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3 is a root of this equation. And uh, since it is not among this list, it cannot be rational. And since it is not 1 or negative 1, um, it is not rational. Also, it's worth mentioning that you know 1 and negative 1 are not roots anyway. So uh, if it was a rational number, it would have appeared uh, you know, in this list from the rational roots theorem. So there is no way that it can be a rational number. Kind of a cool problem because you have 
uh, a number and you construct an equation and you know that your number is the solution to this equation and you're trying to show it's not rational so then you just invoke the rational roots theorem which gives you the possible rational roots of this equation so again this says that if this equation had any rational roots uh, they're right here right uh, but then this is a root so um, it's not among the list of possible rational roots so it certainly can't be a rational number so yeah kind of kind of a fun problem good luck